Hello and welcome to the fourth part of my LEGO Scratch tutorial series that you can use for the LEGO Mindstorms Robot Inventor, for the LEGO Mindstorms E3 and for LEGO Spike Prime. In this part we will try to drive around a toxic area, but you can adjust that to what you want. So you can use maybe a statue or something like that instead of the toxic area. Just something that you don't want to drive against, but that you want to drive around. And we will use loops for that, but more on that later. So first of all, we should, or we want to use the motors to drive around. So we should tell the robot which motors it should use. And for that, we have these set movement motors to tell him that the motors on parts A and B are to move the robot. You might have to adjust this for your robot, but in my case, it's A and B for the model. Next, we want to drive forwards because we are next to the toxic area. So we can move forwards. Here we can tell it how far it should drive. In my case, I want to use 30 centimeters, but you can use more or less. You can try out which works best for you and then you can use that value. Next, we want to drive in a circle. So I will use this move block again but I can change the direction. I can drive to the left or to the, to the right. In my case, I want to drive to the right to drive around it. So I want to turn right and I want to drive for 180 degrees. The value doesn't really match because then it turns for 90 degrees, but for some reason 180 means 90. So you might have to try a bit until you find the best value for your robot. In my case, it turns for 90, 90 degrees. If I say that it should turn for 180 degrees, but for your model, it might be something else. So you have to try to find the right value. And now we can do the same again. So we can copy it. And we can put it below this. Or because uh, that would make the program pretty inconvenient. Maybe we want to drive a bit further. We want to change the 30 centimeters to 50 centimeters. Then we would have to edit this for each of these moves. So we can use something else. And we can find that with the control option because here we can repeat something. So we can use this repeat 10. And then it will repeat the things that are inside of this block 10 times. I want to drive around the toxic area, so I want to repeat it four times. So one time per side. And now we can try it out. So that worked from the concept, but the circle or the, the turning radius isn't right. And we could try to edit this a bit, and then we could try it again until it works again. Or we could try to use a sensor, but we will get to the usage of sensors in the next part. For this part, I want to talk about loops because there are more loops. So there's uh, this repeat loop that we already used. And there's also the forever loop. And with this loop, everything that's inside of this will be done forever. And it's usually best to imagine what it would do and to follow the steps that the program has in order to understand what it will do. So you can start here at the start then it calibrates the sensors, then it starts the loop, but nothing happens here. It only keeps in mind that the loop starts here. Then it will move, it will move, then it will get to the end of the loop, and it will remember my loop started here, and then it will do that again. So this is basically how you can try to understand a program and how you can try to find errors in a program by following the steps that the program takes. You often don't want to repeat something once or four times 
because you want to check continuously if a sensor is activated or not. And for that, this forever loop is pretty useful. But we will get to that in the future. That was it for this part. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video and bye.